Hey Astro Loves, so here I am with part two of the alignments, transits, and the significant themes for the year 2021. So if you haven't had a chance to check out the first part, you should definitely go ahead and give that a view. It's really focused on the main energy of 2021, what we'll be working with as far as the modality. So you have modalities being cardinal, mutable, and fixed. For 2021, the most dynamic parts of our lives are going to be those fixed signs. And so that's going to be the archetypes of Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, and Aquarius. So those parts within our charts, which reflects, you know, an area of our life is going to be really activated in the year of 2021. So there's going to be a, a focus on establishing boundaries, creating structures, and so forth. So definitely give that a watch. If you are still interested in having a reading with me, there's still some spots available as far as the 2021 annual astrology reading. So you can find the link for that in my bio. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can find it in um, the description below. And so let's go ahead and get started. In this particular um, video, I'm gonna be talking about the theme um, of the air element being, being very present in 2021 and that is mainly due to the mercury retrogrades are going to be um all in in air signs this year and so that's how usually the the mercury retrogrades tend to focus on or to um have their trans or that that cycle retrograde cycle in one element and so we're just coming out of the water element and now we are primarily going to be dealing with air. And so that's gonna be a main focus in the video. And then I'm gonna also talk about just how 2020 is ending with the alignment of Jupiter and Saturn and Aquarius. And, and so that is kind of like an initiation into the, 20, um, the year 2021. And of course, Jupiter and Saturn will be in Aquarius throughout the year. And then the last um, thing I want to bring up as well is going to be the North Node being in Gemini. So that's really significant too, as far as this, this air element. So just thinking about the air element, when we think about even the medicine wheel, um, just to bring in a, a different perspective of the four elements, that is the direction of east. That is the eastern horizon. And so the way I think about that is this is energy coming, new energy coming up off the horizon. So it's initiating some kind of beginning. And this is also, it's, it's a beginning within our ideas, if you think about the air correlating to ideas and perspectives. And on top of that, just to add to that, there is an emphasis this year, I feel, on um, creative energy coming from thoughts, like thinking about, um, yeah, creating our reality from our thoughts. That's definitely been a big theme in my life, especially this time of year and i feel that it is definitely preparation for the next year or years to come for all of us and so i want to just bring attention also to the jupiter saturn alignment again because that's so that's such a powerful alignment it's pretty rare um one thing i do want to to note is that um the big thing I feel like or the most significant thing with manifestation and, and utilizing that and working with these different techniques is to be aware of them, work with that energy and then kind of let it go. Um, what I've been seeing just in my line of sight, I've been seeing a lot of emphasis put on this alignment, which it, in its own right, it is very powerful energy and it is rare. However, it's like I just don't want us to put so much weight into what this could mean or just even thinking about what everyone else is saying and like how everyone's hyping it up this is make this something special for you what does this mean for you personally and so i just like a lot of people are really um taking this this and running with it and being just like a little bit dramatic for my taste that's just my personal perspective on this so i just wanted to put that out there because i mean a lot of people it, it's kind of making me think about like the 2020 or 2012 hype which was it was hype you know i mean there's definitely a shift but it's not something where it's like oh my god this is the end of the world or something of that nature so it's definitely a very personal also collective shift but it's something that you're probably gonna not even notice honestly 
for the next like couple years and really with um, Jupiter and Saturn having this this conjunction in Aquarius that is initiating a 20 year cycle. And so really you might not even see this actually come into culmination for another 20 years. I'm not gonna say like your intention and things won't come to fruition until then, but you'll definitely, it's it's gonna, it's a slow build and that's how Saturn works. And Saturn's working in um, alignment with Jupiter. So there's definitely going to be this slow expansion. And as I said, you know, Saturn, it just wants to make sure everything's done well. It wants to make sure, you know, we are like, it wants to kind of create this blueprint. That's definitely what I see with it in, in Aquarius. We are literally creating our blueprint for like the next 20 years and beyond of our lives. Um, and so I definitely just wanted to like throw that out there that you might not see anything like, you know, anything crazy shift in your, in your life right away, but you'll definitely see it over time. And especially once you know, Saturn makes his way out of out of Aquarius, you're going to see, you know, whatever it is that you are initiating, you're definitely going to see it come to fruition around that time. And it's just going to be a slow build, but it's something that's long lasting and it's just going to get better and better over time. And so, as I said, with, with this conjunction happening, it's initiating the themes for 2021. And so there's a focus on Aquarius energy, which is fixed visions, fixed ideas. And so it's being able to also with that Saturn rulership, being able to see the past, present and the future all at once. And it's it's able to really um, have a clear view of that and, and being able to really channel those visions into some kind of structure, into some foundation for our future. So there is going to be this expansion, as I said, in ideas and in visions, but it's going to be that slow expansion, slow growth, and it's just going to be something that, that gets better over time. But the good thing is with that fixed air, it is definitely energy that is directed and it's focused. And the focus also is going to be a focus in connection. So that's a big thing as well with the air signs and the air element and just having that be a theme for this, def definitely for this next year to come, if not the following year. Um, but there is this, this concept of um, restructuring or reimagining our social networks. So we can definitely see how that's playing out right now. We see that a lot of weight is put it being put on social media. And so there are uh, naturally, there are going to be two different extremes. There's going to be a lot of beauty and, you know, um, abundance and just like a lot of things to be grateful for when it comes to social media and the internet as a whole. But then there's also going to be that other end of the spectrum where you can see how it can be really, distorted and really chaotic, you know, and not in the best way. And so right now we are looking at those extremes and we're trying to figure out how to restructure our social social networks and how we connect. Um, and so there's going to be, you know, information, communication, um, just like the different perspectives and the, the visions and just that creative energy. But as you know, a lot of you have worked with, you know, um, practices for like with manifestation and creation starts from a thought like we think about it first and then we start to really um get the visions flowing and the ideas flowing and then next thing you know we have our ideas our visions are literally in physical manifestation so i feel like that's going to be this this 2021 year is like a preparatory year for um our visions to become a reality of, of how we approach, you know, society and how we connect within our own communities on a smaller scale. And then also how we treat our environment. All of these social issues that are coming up is definitely, we are in the brainstorming um, phase of that. We are looking at the different perspectives. We're looking at all the information. We're having this clear, clean focus on how to really um bring things together and how to like fix the weak links which that in itself the the humanitarian aspect is definitely aquarius and then we have the gemini element which is being able to see the missing links looking at all the information outside of ourselves and being able to see what's missing what's not connecting gemini really with all the air signs it, there's a desire to connect in some way with gemini it's connecting in information connecting energy and so with that rulership of Mercury, it's looking at the, it has the ability to zone, to hone in on, you know, the details 
and really get an idea of what is missing. You know, how do I fix this? How do I fix this network? How do I put this and this together? Um, and so, you know, the good thing is like, we do have this Aquarius energy backing us up in this fixed modality, very, very present. So we'll have a little bit of grounded, um, of a grounded approach when it comes to looking at the the weak links and looking at the details of things. Cause Gemini, you know, it's mutable, air and so it's the most airy of the air signs and by um what i mean by that is basically it's 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 air moving all around it's untamed air it's a little bit chaotic it's just like going and going and going i think about like you know i would say a tornado but probably not even maybe like a dust storm or something like that um but it's definitely it needs a channel it needs to be directed and focused it needs kind of like an intention and so I feel like that's going to be a focus as well with Gemini and uh, the North Node in Gemini. There is collectively in the environment that we're in emotionally is to really connect. It's to re um, to help information evolve energy, the way we connect. Um, I've been like watching more. I've been getting more back into the physics part of my myself and or just my studies. And I'm starting to learn again about quantum physics and quantum entanglement. And I'm just like, oh my God, this is literally like the networks. It's like in the universe and it's in here, like in our reality here on earth, everything is so reflective. And so that's something that we're, we're really going to be looking at is like, you know, what do our relationships say about us? And, and, you know, what can we, you know, what are the missing links within ourselves and how can we, you know, fix that? How can we make the, the right connections um, in order to, to really get things working smoothly and get things functioning and, and to um, evolve. And the biggest theme with that as well is going to be flexibility, adaptability, and just also being very quick-minded and embodying that quick mind and not overthinking things, not dwelling on it, because that's definitely going to be a side effect of all this air energy is going to be. Anxiety is going to be a lot, you know, overthinking things. Um, it's going to definitely be present. And so I want to bring attention to the Mercury retrogrades. So the Mercury retrogrades, as I said, they're all going to be in air signs. So there's going to be a lot of um, need in our lives for meditative practices, for really getting um, a grounded practice on clearing our minds, staying centered. Because as I said, there's going to be a lot of overthinking, a lot of anxiety, um, the potential for that is going to be very, very strong. And so the first Merc Mercury retrograde is going to be in Aquarius. So that's definitely going to push us to be a little bit more objective um, with the information, with um, with our communications and just our visions in itself, being objective, reflecting on our visions, what we're coming into this year with. Okay, what do we, as far as this long lasting foundation, what do we want that to look like? How is that going to, um, how are these foundations going to serve us? And what ideas are we holding on to? So we definitely are going to be guided to be a little bit more discerning with our ideas and, and being able to have some kind of patience. That's what Saturn placements um, or Saturn energy in general is, is patience. It's like letting things you know, kind of build on itself and evolve and just kind of letting go. When it comes to manifestation, that's the biggest lesson I have had to learn is just like, let it go, like leave it alone. You know, you put your intentions out there now, just kind of like try to shift your focus on something else or like do something proactive that's going to support your intentions, but just don't dwell on it in that kind of like, you know, anxious way. Um, the next Mercury, and that's going to be that Mercury retrograde is going to be January 30th through um, February 20th. So then the next Mercury retrograde of 2021 is going to be in Gemini. And that's going to be May 29th through June 22nd. And so with that, with that Mercury retrograde in Gemini, that's just going to be such a potent Gemini or Mercury retrograde. I'm thinking of that previous card I had in a cosmic climate of like clinging to the past and the head's just like in a box of like chaotic shit going on, um, which is my full moon Gemini, definitely Gemini eclipse. I'm pretty sure 
looking at the date, there's going to be a, an eclipse in Gemini at that time. It's probably the solar eclipse. Um, but anyways, I will definitely obviously inform you guys about that. But the, the goal with the Mercury retrograde in Gemini is going to be um, the goal is going to be to hone in on like looking at the details. We're going to be cleaning up our thoughts and our ideas, trying to get make some order out of things. So we're going to be pulling in a, a little bit more of that yin energy in regard to Mercury. And really with the Mercury retrogrades, it is a focus on the yin energy is kind of like coming back and like taking our time and kind of, you know, Mercury is the planet that moves, like it's the fastest moving planet aside from, you know, the moon, if you want to think about the moon, kind of group it in when it comes to astrology as a planet. First you have the moon, then you have Mercury. So it's moving all over the place. It's networking. It's going into all these nooks and crannies that other planets can't really um, go to. And so when it comes to the Mercury retrograde, it's finally Mercury gets time to be like, oh, like I've been so busy. I'm going to come home. I'm going to relax. I'm going to just like probably overthink all the shit. Right. But it's the time to really let yourself breathe, center yourself and really get focused. So with that Mercury and Gemini, we're going to be guided to look at the details with some kind of grace, you know, having, you know, taking your time with it and like trying to really break things down, kind of put things in a group and kind of try to get that broader perspective on your ideas. It's like, okay, all of these ideas are coming up. I have all these different perspectives on, you know, how we should approach this thing. So how can I be general? That's, that's the goal. Now we're moving to that archetype of Sagittarius, the opposite of Gemini, where it's like, being broad with your perspective, with your approach, with your intention first, especially if everything seems kind of like, you know, chaotic and you can't really get clear on things, especially when it comes to manifestation, you want to be general, be broad first. And then once you feel good, you connect to that feeling, you connect to that vibration, then you will, you know, begin to like, or you'll have the ability to be a little bit more specific. And, you know, at that time, you'll probably start to see things manifesting. So the details will kind of fill itself in. But with that Gemini, Gemini retrograde, that is the goal is to like really gather our thoughts and ideas and start to put them in these broad categories so we can really start you know approaching those ideas to really start to bring those into the physical so moving forward um in september september 27th through october 18th we have mercury retrograde in libra and so the goal there is going to be to prioritize and balance our, our ideas and really ground those ideas so then we're going to be reaching to um, the opposite archetype of, of Libra, which is going to be Taurus and, or I'm sorry, not Taurus, Venus, the opposite ruler of the opposite sign ruling that Venus rules. Yeah. I hope you, you got that. Cause I'm starting to confuse myself. Oh, this is Mercury energy. But yeah, so we're going to be reaching to Taurus. They're both ruled by Venus. Now we're going to go to the yin expression of Venus. There we go. So the goal is going to be to be able to balance and ground these ideas so we can start to really create some found some foundation that we have initiated at the beginning of this year and slightly before with that Saturn Jupiter alignment. And so we are going to really see what's essential. What is a priority right now, um, especially when it comes to if you're working with a group, if you're connecting with clients, you know, um, what is going to help benefit both sides? Because that is Libra energy. It's definitely like I see both perspectives. I'm seeking fairness. I'm seeking justice. I'm seeking peace. Um, you know, that oneness energy. So I'm going to really focus, okay, how can I, I, I see what you're, you're wanting to bring to the table. I see what this person's wanting to bring to the table. So how do we meet in the middle? So it's like the negotiations, it's meeting one-on-one. -on -one, it's really starting to build that bridge, right? To connect. And so that is going to be that last Mercury retrograde of the year. And so, like I said, the, the goal is to find out what, um, what is essential when it comes to the ideas and the perspectives. And so the main theme, as you guys can see, once again, just going to bring everything full circle is we are going to be in a year of ideas, of new beginnings, of fresh energy. This is a period of inspiration and illumination coming from this air element. And so the focus is on it going to be to reevaluate how we connect, how we socialize with one another, and how do we really create a new society and a new structure for all of us to in a perfect world, coexist, you know, peacefully, obviously. 
I'm a little Debbie Downer, so we'll see how close we get to that. But this is only the beginning. And as I said, we are moving into this like Aquarius era. I wouldn't say the age of Aquarius, but definitely this enlightenment period and just doing things differently. And really the goal is innovating ancient principles. So let's see how the ancients did it back in the day. Um, and let's carry that on and innovate it and kind of build on top of that and do our work to come here to do you know what it is that we came to do and be in our purpose be in our authority and um live life to the fullest so that is um my take on this air element and the mercury retrogrades for the year 2021 questions comments always leave them below and as i said before if you would like to work with me or get a reading on 2021 for you specifically definitely reach out to me for that um all the information is available to you somewhere here on the internet. So take care.